Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who don't already know me, my name is Tamara and I'm a licensed cosmetologist. This video is talking about my experience working at an all Vietnamese nail salon, but first I want to begin with a disclaimer. I want to be very clear, these are not facts and I have nothing against the Vietnamese culture. These are just my personal experience and my own opinion. I've worked at two Vietnamese nail salons, the one I was at for almost eight years and the second one I was only at for about a year. I'm going to differentiate the two by calling them Salon A and Salon B. Salon A was actually owned by a Vietnamese man and an American woman. This salon stood out way more than any other nail salons. This was because they always had an American receptionist. They had a cleaning crew that came in twice a week. They were just very good with technology. They were always getting the new products. They were always making sure their clients were number one. Um, they offered a rewards program. They just really wanted to be different than the other ones in the area. I'm just gonna talk about the different things that happened throughout the years and that happened at a lot of different nail salons. Number one, I know as a client and even me as an employee, talking in Vietnamese the whole time someone do is doing your nails is very frustrating just because you never know what they're talking about. You don't know if they're talking about you, you don't know if they're talking about your service, you don't know if they're just talking about what they did over the weekend. And that's that was a very frustrating situation. Um, as time went on, I did, I was able to pick up a little bit of the language just using my contact clues knowing what was going around, but you still, at the end of the day, never know. I will say not every time they speak, they are speaking about you, the client. Sometimes they're really just talking. They're, they're talking, they're gossiping, they're just trying to get catch up on each other's lives. They're not specifically just talking about the client. But I won't hold you. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they do talk about you. If you're a difficult client, if you're a picky client, um, if you're giving them a hard time, they definitely are talking about you. I want to talk about when a group of black and brown people come into the salon, the way Vietnamese people react is very childish and very immature. And I've experienced this on multiple occasions. I'm going to begin how they act with the South Asian community. They used to talk about how Indians do not tip well. They talk about how they smell. They talk about so many different things before they even introduce themselves to the client, before they even understand what that person's about. Is honestly just judging a book by its cover. Now, when it comes to a group of Black people, you guys know we are very intimidating and we are powerful and strong together. Now, going into a Vietnamese nail salon, they find it extremely intimidating. And it's such a powerful thing when we can come in together, where we can laugh together, where we can joke together, be loud together. But to them, in their mind, they're wondering what services are we getting? They're wondering, are we gonna tip well? They're wondering, are we gonna give them a hard time? Are we gonna try to get discounts? Are we gonna try to argue saying our nail is crooked? Like all of these things go through their head before they actually meet us, before they actually understand who we are. We just wanna come in and get great customer service. We just, just want our nails done properly. And unfortunately, when we walk in as a group, our intimidation is too strong for them to handle. There were times where a group of black people would come in and they specifically wanted me to address them and see what they needed to be done. And again, it just all depends on how we walked into the salon, whether we just walked in, hey, how are you? But if we walked in any kind of rowdiness, any kind of cheerful way, they wouldn't wanna address you because they just weren't sure of the approach. They weren't sure how to approach this kind of crowd. They were, they were always unsure. I will tell you, Vietnamese people are always interested in black lifestyle. And I say that because, again, I've worked there for almost eight years. 
They were interested in my hair. They were interested in my child's hair when she would come to the salon. They were interested in how we eat. They were interested in so many different things. They were just, they're very judgmental people. Um, and again, this is not every Vietnamese person. These are just the majority of Vietnamese people I've worked with. So I'm gonna share a story about Simone A that really opened my eyes to know I no longer wanted to work there. One morning, I opened up the salon as usual. I went to put everything away. I went to set up my station. I went to get everything ready for the receptionist. And a woman came in. She sat down for her appointment. And my client actually came in for the day. And we actually had a black woman come in. And she wanted to get a service done. She wanted to get a fill. I had a client. The other nail tech had a client. So it was only one left that came in. So I called her over. Her name was, her American name was actually Annie. So I said, Annie, you know, this lady wanted a fill with gel polish. You know, here you go. That was it. And I went back to take my client. I, my client was actually getting a wax. So I went back to the room. I did my client and then come back out. That lady was no longer there. Now, it was a little bit too fast to get a full fill done. But, and I also no longer seen her name on the computer. So I was wondering where that client went and the receptionist had said she wouldn't do it. I don't know her excuse for not doing it. I don't know what happened. I went up to this girl and again, she spoke minimal English, but I went up to her and I asked her why I didn't do her nails. She's like, oh no, I don't do it. I'm like, why? No, oh no, I don't do it. No excuse, no reason why she wouldn't do it. She just wouldn't take it and the client left. So at that time, I called the owner and I spoke to her and let her know this is what's going on. This is not the first time it happened, but this is the first time that I'm here when it's happening and she did not take her. So I, that was, that was the last conversation I had with the owner. About two hours later, that same lady went on Google and wrote a review about the salon. Now, anyone that knows reviews are great ways of letting people come into a business or not coming into a business. She wrote a review saying how they refused to take her nails and then she talked about how they were racist and you know i'm the one of the main faces of that salon so for her to say it was racist that was a big deal and for me not to know the girl refused her services really hurt me and it was upsetting because the owner actually never addressed the issue to her this is important because i see a lot of black people a lot of spanish people any kind of race that are supporting certain salons and just to get their nails done or just to get their hair done or just to get a service and are getting poor customer service and are not being respected as a person.